I like to call this segment <clears throat> uh, to all the refugees who seek a better life. Uh, back in 1979, there was a revolution in Iran. First, the imprisoned and tortured were executed. Thousands of officials of the previous regime, including generals like uh, Mr. Pakravan, or Prime Minister Hoveida, or Minister of Education, Dr. Farouk Parsa. And then Mr. Andrew Young, the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., called Khomeini a saint. And life went on. Then uh, 72 Americans working for the U.S. Embassy in Tehran were taken hostage. And life kind of stopped for some 444 days until they were all freed unharmed. And life, for most people, resumed its normal course. And then uh, they identified and shot to death people of prominence who had gone on exile, such as Prime Minister Bakhtiar, and scores of others. And life went on. And then they came for Baha'is, imprisoned, tortured, and executed, hundreds of them, including the members of the first National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Iran at that time, and then the second National Spiritual Assembly first group were disappeared and the second group were openly executed. And then most of the members of the local spiritual assembly of the Baha'is of Tehran. And some other assembly members in other cities and regular citizens in other cities. And scores of other prominent Baha'is such as Professor Manucher Hakim, the professor of medicine from Tehran University and Dr. Masih Farhangi, who treated uh, the sick in the prison before he was executed. Then Dr. Ali Murad Davudi, the prominent philosopher uh, and writer of the University of Tehran, who was executed. And then uh, Mr. Kamal Din Bakhtiar, uh, Bakhtavar, uh, a prominent and well-known writer among the Baha'is, and then life went on. Then they came for the communists, seized, imprisoned, tortured, and killed many of them. And there, were not, there was not even a ripple inside or outside of the country. Then they came for Mujahideen, who first collaborated with them, but then split. They seized, imprisoned, tortured, and executed thousands of them. By some accounts, some 18,000 in one month, and dumped them in a mass grave. And life went on as if nothing had happened for most people inside and outside of the country. Then they went after Turkish, Baluch, and other ethnic minorities and set up execution camps in all corners of the country. And there was occasional ripples of complaint from Europe, Canada, the U.S., and elsewhere. But for the most part, life went on with not much of a worry for anyone, anywhere. Then they went after religious minorities of Jewish, Christian, Zoroastrian, other backgrounds with little global impact as well. Uh, a smiling mullah became the candidate for presidency and promised dialogue among civilizations. And many went to the polls and elected him to the office but still executions, tortures, disappearances continued, perhaps at a somewhat slower pace at that time. 
and the Smiley Mullah received congratulatory remarks from both inside and outside of the country. And life moved on. The pace of executions accelerated from the early 2000s. And for the first time, there was a little debate among the hand-picked presidential candidates. And the masses found an opening and flocked to two of the less extreme candidates. An ex-prime minister of the same regime and an ex-speaker of the parliament of the same regime. There was a little outcry and a few months of demonstration and many postings on YouTube. But with a few more months of imprisonment, torture, rape and executions, things became quiet again. Although there are periodic ripples uh, through a letter of concern from the United Nations or the US or the European Union or others concerning the violations of human rights. But not much else. Oh yes, there are also sanctions of some kind, which means there is a little less legal trade from the West and more trade from Russia and China. I was a fairly young student when the revolution happened and I'm now an old man and I haven't done much better. Yes, I have cried many times. I've pleaded with God to hear the agony of the deprived for years with no avail. And thought about shedding light where there is darkness, but did not exactly know how. But now, God has given me the opportunity to record these videos to assist all refugees from across the globe in learning the English language and other things that I know and my friends may assist me so that they can excel in their schools and do well on their jobs and then remember the victims of oppression and promote peace, friendship and love on earth for all God's children everywhere. Uh, so friends, the, uh, these series have, are composed of about 40 lessons, perhaps about 10 conversation pieces and 10 reading assignments. My recommendation is to go through the lessons as fast as or as slow as possible. Each segment is between 5 to maximum 15 minutes. Uh, you can listen to it as many times as you wish until you become comfortable with it. Then after you cover a number of lessons, maybe 10 or 15 or 20, then go to the conversation pieces. And then when you feel comfortable with both, gradually go to reading assignments. It would probably be best uh, to wait for the reading assignments until you cover uh, at, at least one round of the lessons and then start going through the readings and then go back. All you need is a dictionary and, uh, and, and concentration so that you can cover these series as quickly as possible. Thank you for your attention.